Hi guys, in this video we're going to go through a one-way or one-factor, same thing, ANOVA example, by hand. And we're gonna, I'm going to separate this into a, a couple parts, maybe a few parts, so as to not make any one part too long. Uh, the first part, I just want to under, fully understand the problem and uh, start gathering some information and see why this problem could be handled using a one-way ANOVA. So let's read this together. So I'm reading from here. So we're a parachute manufacturer and fabric is an essential material in our final product. However, we don't make that fabric in-house. We purchase it from suppliers. All right, so there are four suppliers that make this super high strength, high quality fabric. And basically we're interested in seeing whether there's a difference among them with respect to the strength of the fabric that they make. It's called tensile strength. Okay, so that's specific to uh, people who are familiar with fabrics might know more about that, but that's not important. Uh, you can measure the strength of a fabric uh, using a machine that stretches it until it tears, and the point that it tears is um, recorded by the machine, and I believe it's measured in pounds, um, per feet or something like this, but th th what we need to know is that a higher tens number for tensile strength is indicates a higher strength fabric. Okay, that's what's important for us. We don't have to know too much about that. All right. So ba obviously, you would think if you were the manufacturing company, uh, pa parachute manufacturer, and you were buying these fabrics, you would want a tensile strength that's as high as possible. So you'd want to find the supplier that that makes the highest strength fabric possible. But, of course, they're all going to claim that they, they make some great fabrics. So you want to conduct your own investigation. So, back to reading roughly what the text from the problem is. In order to conduct this investigation, we purchase fabric from all four suppliers and we randomly select fabric from each supplier in order to test for tensile strength. So basically, we, we get a, uh, a shipment from each supplier we randomly select uh, swaths of that fabric from each supplier and put it through this machine that's going to test the tensile strength. Of course, we understand that there's variability in fabric strength, even within suppliers. So we must make a few measurements from each supplier and focus on, focus on comparing not individual fabric strengths, but the mean fabric strength from the suppliers. So in other words, you don't want to just take one fabric from each of the four suppliers and then uh, select and then see whether th those are different. Those are obviously going to be different. I mean, it's very uh, low chance that they're all going to be the same. Uh, but if you were to just focus on one supplier and you were to take multiple fabric swaths from that supplier and test the strengths of those, you would find that there's variability even within the supplier. And we've learned about that in our intro stats courses, that there's variability all around us. So uh, it's no, it comes as no surprise to us that even uh, from the same supplier, you're going to get a bunch of different readings or fabric strengths. Okay, So instead of focusing on individual ones, we take a bunch of them or a sample of them, a random sample hopefully, and we calculate the mean and then we could use the mean which is just the average right to compare between the suppliers that seems more reasonable okay now back to the text here so we will use a level of significance of 0.05 remember that was alpha right so this was level of significance so we have an alpha equal to 0.05 for this test that's given to us by the question Okay, remember 0.05, um, you could also think of this as 5%. Be comfortable converting back and forth, of course. So we're going to use an alpha of 0.05 to determine whether there is any difference among the suppliers with respect to their mean fabric tensile strength. Okay, so our objective here is to just see whether there's any difference. So. This, uh, this seems ripe for an, an analysis of variance. Why? Because we want to compare 
four means. Okay, so there's going to be a mean from supplier one. Okay, if the supplier has a name, we'll, we would call it by its name. But as you see here from the data, which I'm going to talk about in a second, that the suppliers, we just give them generic names, supplier one, two, three, four. Okay, they might have names, but let's not get uh, caught up with that. So the so mu one would be the population mean from supplier one. So in other words, if you were to possibly get all the fabric that supplier one ever made, you could conceive of this like this, the average tensile strength of all the fabric it made would be mu1. Okay, So we want to see if mu1 equals mu2. Think about what mu2 might mean. It's the population mean tensile strength of supplier 2 equals mu3 equals mu4. And I'm done, right? So I'm saying that all four of these suppliers have the same tensile strength. I want to ask that question. So my null hypothesis will start by assuming that mu1 equals mu2 equals mu3 equals mu4. Okay? And we we saw this is the null hypothesis for a one-way analysis of variance. This is one way to write it. This is the way we will write it. The alternative hypothesis is always going to be at least one inequality. That's what that stands for. At least one inequality. That means at least one of these equal signs is not an equal sign. Or think of it rather like this at least one of these pairs is different than the other. It could be that they're all different. That would indicate that they're all different. It could be just mu1 is different than the rest of them and the rest of them are the same. It could be that mu4 is different than the rest of them but the rest of them are the same. It could be anything in between. Okay, So there's a lot of possibilities when we say at least one inequality. All right, But it's important to remember that the null hypothesis starts out by assuming this very specific possibility, which is that all four of the populations, all four of the groups, in this case, they're suppliers of fab parachute fabric. All four of the groups have the same mean. And what is the me mean of what? Of tensile strength. Okay, So this is important. Right? So this would be our hypothesis statement. We would complete it by also specifying our level of significance. Okay, And this would be our very first step in attacking a problem like this. Not only are we just taking things from the notes and writing them down, but we're understanding what these statements mean. Basically, I converted all these words up here into a clear scientific statement and a t in the form of a test, right? We have a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. In the review like uh, tutorials, I, we explained uh, how to formulate a hypothesis statement. So this would be the hypothesis statement appropriate to resolve this issue that this parachute manufacturer is having. Okay, so this is a one-way. ANOVA. Okay? Now, from here, our next step would be, take, let's take a glance at the data. I mean, you, you, should, you could have just glanced at the data earlier and, and got an idea of what we were talking about up here in words. But here's the data that we collected from our little study. We collected a random sample of tensile strengths from supplier 1. And then quite independently, we created a random, we, we collected a random sample of tensile str strengths from supplier two. That's what those are. You could think of these as like pounds per feet. The units I've left off, we don't need to worry too much about that. Okay. Just remember that a higher number like 45 indicates a much stronger piece of fabric than say 12, right? 
Then we did the same thing for supplier three. We took a bunch of random swaths of fabric from supplier three and we put them through that tensile strength machine and here are the values we got. And we did the same thing independently from supplier four. Okay, so this is the data that's gonna allow us to actually answer this question or to come to a conclusion whether to reject HO or fail to reject HO. All right, so that would be our first step. First step, what we did in this video is to fully understand the problem, then to uh, convert this problem into a, a clear, concise hypothesis statement appropriate like this. Okay, you should get nothing different than what I have here. Okay. Our second step in the follow-up video is part two. I'm going to actually conduct this hypothesis test, begin to conduct it, and see how far we get with it. Okay, so this is going to be all by hand, and then to follow up, we'll complete uh, a second uh, series where I'm going to do this using Google Sheets, so we see how to do it with software. Okay, so continue watching part two.